This is a photograph I took in Sutton Park a couple of years ago. Um, I think it was somewhere by Banners Gate, I can't remember now. But it's, uh, it's a simple little composition. I'm going to have to do something with the sky, it's just a bit, bit boring, just plain blue. And uh, try and emphasise this path, a path a bit more, really bring it into play. So I'll, I'll just introduce the materials first. Got my usual palette, I always have the colours in the same places on the palette so I know exactly where they are. Starting at the bottom left I've got, sorry, sort of this way around I always have it. Ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, Lizarin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber and light red. My tea towel I use to wipe the excess water off on the hay. I always, got, I always use the same three brushes, got the, the large Ron Ranson Hake. The only reason is that it comes with a longer handle than this. I'd just cut mine in half just so I could fit it in the bag I was using at the time. Second most common brush I use is the number three rigger for little figures and bits of grass, branches, all this palaver. And a number th uh, three quarter inch flat just for doing straight edges, buildings, stuff like that. These bits of card come in handy. For scraping rocks or or maybe buildings or what what have you, and I always use cup and watercolors. This is raw sienna. It's the most common colour I use. This one, raw sienna, probably followed by um, ultramarine blue and lemon yellow. Those three tend to run out. I mean, the elizabeth crimson and the uh, the reds last forever. Issue just for dabbing out um, clouds and stuff in the sky, and then this it's a collapsible water jar. But this lip, this lip comes in handy just for if I just wipe the hike against it, it takes off a lot of the excess water, so there's not as much then to take off on the uh, tea towel. I always use Fabriano, base basically because it's cheap. It's about 30 per sheet from artdiscount.co.uk. This is 15 by 11, it weighs 130 pound, which isn't the, the heaviest paper in the world. I mean, it's, 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 it's just about thick enough to get away with, but the way I get around the cockling is if I, I, I soak it all over first before, before I start painting, so it it's, um, stretches evenly, and then it's just a case of pulling it taut and refixing on this right hand side. So just have another quick look at the um, the photo before I start. And like I said, I'm going to have to do something with this sky when I start off because it's uh, a bit bland. So I'm just going to stick that up there, out of the way, for now. And uh, grab my palette. Always hold it in that hand like that. So I've got palette, towel to hand all the time. Brush in other hand. I'm starting off with just clear water, clear water, bearing this set photos. I should have used a clip for this, hang on, I'll stick that out of the way somewhere. All right, so it's clear water, all over, a little bit more, make sure it's nice and wet, so all the colours blend together and you get nice soft edges. And then, I'm just, so you can see how the very quickly all the hair is spread out I mean, just by dipping the tips in just brings them all together just trying to the raw sienna not, not purely even, just leave little gaps here and there and then just ultramarine on its own uh, brush that in from the right hand side. And then maybe just watching out for bits of water running down, running down the paper. And just, just very lightly grazing the paper just to take off any little 
bits dripping down. You often get them accumulating at the bottom and then they'll start to creep back up. Um, clean the brush and I think I'll just put another another colour in, just put some clouds. So I'll go alizarin crimson, nice cloud colour, just alizarin crimson, just a touch of that and then pines grey. And again, where do I want the clouds? Well there's going to be a tree there so I want to keep that nice and light. So I might just keep the clouds quite subtle and just put a, say just brush a few in. And obviously as they go off into the distance they get smaller and smaller. I think I'll leave it at that for the clouds. You'll be amazed that the temptation to overdo it is incredible. But often just do a little bit, take a backward step and have a look at it and quite often less is more. Now the paper's stretched and it's stretched evenly because I've wetted it all over evenly. So even with I think industry standard is about £140, now this is slightly less than that, but because I wet it all over evenly, it, it, it stretches evenly, so I'll keep it, it flat, and you don't get all that crinkly, horrible, horrible stuff. So, that's just a simple sky. So, what do I do next? So, I'm going to put these, hang on, just wondering now if I can... No, I don't know why I touched that, I knew it was wet. What have I got? So I'm just going to do it anyway. I'll just stick that. Wish I put this out of the way. Hang on. I'm just going to give this a quick dry. It'll do for this. I'm just going to pop that up there so you can see it. So I'll keep that there in view so you can, can you see that? 